Hello, everyone, and welcome back to I Was a Teenage Exocolonist. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right now, we are playing as Roscoe, uh, the not currently teenage exocolonist. Nah, just, we're, we're barely 10. Barely so. 10 years old, uh, born on our ship, the Stratospheric, uh, that has come to colonize the planet of Vertumna. Is that correct? That is Vertumna? correct. Both yes. of those were correct. Well yeah, done. Yeah, thanks. Um, our plant, our parents are the ones responsible for uh, growing the food for the colony. And last time we spent time getting to know our new home here on uh, the planet Vertumna 4, uh, meeting with our friends, figuring out what we can do, what everything is like within our colony and what sort of things and jobs and roles we can take on. Um, as we help, uh, you know, gr grow in our colony here. Uh, also, by the way, uh, we're getting lots of premonitions and deja vu and remembering past and future timelines and our past and future selves are all colliding into each other in our dreams. It's no big deal. <laughs> I was about to say, no big deal. That, that's nothing to worry about. <laughs> Pay no mind to the, the ominous deja vu. It's probably nothing. We started the game by dying. What, no, you know, whatever. It's fine. Also, I realized that that was probably an enemy that was pulling us out of the fire i think possibly same red, colors red haired same colored outfits i think mm -hmm. um an enemy who is just a little child now just a, a wee lass with everybody else um so yeah uh i guess now um we should just uh, <laughs> we need to decide how to spend the month <laughs> ignore the sense of impending doom that we feel every time we fall asleep and we're just gonna figure out how we want to spend the month indeed <laughs> so we're not able to progress past 100 stress but we still have more than we definitely have a, a month of activity in us before we have to deal with that so okay. do we want to work in geoponics do we want to go study do we want to play sports ball what you feeling uh i kind of want to like I kind of want to do geoponics, actually. Okay, I let's do some geoponics. So I know that's going to make us strong, yep, right? Yeah, that's toughness and friendship with Cal as well. Okay, and I know I was literally just talking about last time how, like, we should pump some, like, stats into the things that we've already, I don't, like, oh, well, I guess we, I was going to say, like, persuasion and, and like, soft skills like that, yep. which we already kind of did. Um, so yeah, well, we did we did one month of persuasion, yes. which is good. Um, we are just as a reminder, we're ge genetically pre or not predisposed. We're genetically engineered to be better at at blue brain things, but that yeah. doesn't mean we should do those exclusively. It just means that we are we are better at them. That's kind of yeah. what I was thinking. I figured maybe we'd spend a little time shoveling dirt, and then we go back to um, you know working on our blue skills. Okay, yeah. Shovel dirt. Yeah. It's your first day in the glorious world of agricultural soil conveyance. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Good morning, Roscoe. Looks like you're working your way. It looks like you're working for your old lady. I'm... Uh, oh, God. Let me just start over. With the fucking <laughs> line. I don't know what we're doing it's here. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> you're doing fine. If you ever want me to tap in for general narration, just let me know. Okay, cool. Good morning, Roscoe. Looks like you're working for your old lady. I hope you don't expect me to go easy on you just because you're my kid. She walks you around the geoponics wing and points out where everything is. Your job is to move sod, compost plants, garden waste, and equipment from one place to another. Get comfortable with this, she says, pushing a squeaky old-fashioned wheelbarrow towards you. Now, any questions before you start moving that dirt? Don't we have machines for this? Uh, where do you want me to move it again? Why not use hydroponics? Let's get to work. Want to go just down them? Uh, yeah, why don't we have machines for this? The construction crews already claimed all the hover lifts, she said, struggling. Shrugging. Uh, oh, shrugging. I thought she was struggling to hold the thing up. Anyway. <laughs> no, she no, doesn't struggle with strong. anything. <laughs> I, was, you know, I was, like, surprised. I'm like, that's yeah. a weird choice. Um, but they'll break down in a few years anyway, and we don't have the materials to fix them. She grips your forearm. We're planet side now. Use your muscles. Nature's hydronic hydraulic pistons where do i move it again yeah uh from over there she points to a dirt pile to there she points to an identical pile 10 meters away she sees your confusion we had some very precious soil from earth on the ship full of the nutrients and bugs and bacteria our plants need to grow but it was lost <sighs> she sighs in an accident now we have to make more from scratch using vertumnan soil, soil. This is part of the process. Why not use hydroponics? Yeah. 
On the ship, we grew most of our plants with their roots in water, and it's true. And it's true, it was more hygienic that way. Your mom replies. She brushes, brushes an insect off her arm, which lets out a loud squeak in ob of objection. Yeah, the little <laughs> squeaky bug. But hydroponic systems use too much energy. Here, we have to grow as much as we can the old-fashioned way. Let's get to work. Okay, that's my kid. Your mom says, slapping you on the back. You stumble a little. We're brainy, mom. <laughs> we got noodle arms. We got noodle arms. Your arms start to ache after the first half hour of work, but you keep going. By the end of the month, you feel utterly drained and exhausted. And good somehow. You can feel your muscles growing already. All right, let's shovel some dirt. We just shoveled a lot of dirt. Uh, looking for more difficulty? This harder card challenge offers you... Uh, wait, option will keep you on your toes. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking, I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Want to focus on the story? Uh, you will replace future mini games with a quick coin flip based on your age and skills. You can change either option anytime. No, oh, let's do the hard card challenge. Right? Yeah. Is that enough? What? It, it's off right now. It, it's oh. it's um it's three settings. We can skip. We can have normal, or we can have harder. Can we stay with normal? Yeah. Okay. That's why that's why I was okay. like, are, are you sure? I mean, we can. I'm fine with that. I don't like, know if... We, okay. Yeah. 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 Whatever no, we're, we're doing we're now, fine. I would like to stick with that. But okay. Let's stick with that. Okay. Ba baby, baby brain. No, wait. What? Okay, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I yes. was going to do zero, zero baby, zero baby, zero brain. But then yellow, zero baby. Never mind. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> we still did it. Okay. <laughs> Stress um, cry. Oh no! Yeah, that was that was us as we were going through the wormhole. It was. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah, it's a hard oh. moment for us. Yeah. <laughs> got some toughness. We got some kudos. We got some stress. We got some cow. Yeah, we did so much. Late quiet. Next month is early pollen. pollen. Oh, age ten. Oh well, yeah. I guess there's still a chance. Ooh, it's so different. Hi, Roscoe. Hoy. Okay. Mars says, looking uh, you up and down with a sneer. Your shoes are gross. That's what you get for walking around in the dirt out there. She sniffs. Not me. I'm sticking to the ship until they pave over all that icky mud. She wonders if maybe... Wait, you wonder if maybe she's scared of more than just getting dirty. Okay. That's an egg for me. An egg? We need some time off. Yeah. We're so stressed. We're going to we find we'll, a hefty we'll... red Xeno egg. Is that for like a pet? Mm -hmm. Ooh. Um, I don't know if any oh. of these say new things. Oh, you found me. Uh, this is adjusting better than you expected to life on the surface. He's already found new places to hide and do whatever he does out here by himself. Does this interest you? We yeah. can give we can give gifts. Oh. The egg is a gift. Do we want to give him an egg? Want we give him egg. an egg? Wait. We also can use those as... Uh, items during skill challenges like the card skill challenges to do things oh, okay watch him be like ew gross and then we're gonna be even less of a friend with this let's let, we can give it a shot let's try it got rid of the card um, but, but he liked it oh cool um thank you just says clearly unsure about how to react i'll uh, find something to do with it so not his favorite thing oh, okay but it didn't hurt our friendship with okay. him okay it gave him a plus one right yeah okay I'll take it. Your dad sneezes and wipes his nose with a handkerchief. Ooh, this pollen. He says, his voice thick with congestion. Someday, I'm going to get used to this. All these fucking, like, spores from yeah. all of the... This, this weird... These fungal These things. mushrooms. Yeah. Ugh. What's up, Tangent? Tangent! Have you gone outside the colony yet? Tang asks you. I hear all sorts of terrible things. Regardless, we're not allowed to stray from the gates unless we're on an expedition. Tang rolls her eyes. Not that it stops my brother. We don't have anything else nope. to give. Okay. Um, Wait, already talked there's with Mars. an enemy? We you haven't, haven't talked, talked with, with them. Yeah. yeah. Tammy's dad is the head of expeditions, which means he's out surveying the jungle every day. We've already oh, read, we this. Did yeah. read this. Okay. Some of these are new, some of these aren't. Okay. Um, Cal crouches beside a big puddle, staring into his reflection. It's just so amazing, don't you think? On the strato, we could only have a very have very short showers, and we had to reuse the same water over and over. 
he continues. But here, water just falls out of the sky and then lies in puddles, lakes even. It's it's a whole thing. A happy watering pot uh, bot trundles by. Oh, cute. An enemy, an enemy. What's up? Are you practicing for Vertimalia? Oh, an enemy says as you approach. There's going to be a festival in dust season. They're having a bot wrestling contest. I'm going to compete. Oh, okay. All right. You so need to sleep. It's pollen season right now? Yeah, it's pollen right now. Okay. So and then... dust is in the future. Okay. The living quarters. The ship's living quarters are where everyone sleeps, eats, and hangs out. The private bedrooms are small. You share one with your parents, so colonists spend most of their time in the big common area. There's a lounge and cafeteria, and a, a cr how do you say that? Crash? 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 I don't know. Where all the little kids and babies are raised communally. Okay. okay. Relax in the lounge. Sure. The lounge is a long, well-lit hall along the outer hull of the mid uh, the ship's midsection. It's strewn with tables and cushions and serves as a communal living air room for the tiny one-room spaces every family is assigned. You flop down into the lounge's big beanbag pile with some of the other kids. Uh, Cal has has a dazed, peaceful look on his face. The air smells so good on Vertumna, and so does the dirt, even. Uh, you notice his clothes are filthy, but obviously Cal couldn't care less. Anemone bounces in. Holy crap! There's so much space to run around and play in! Common Chief Rhett uh, set up an outdoor... Oh my god. <laughs> Common Chief Rhett set up an outdoor sports ball court and it is way huger than the old one on the ship. <laughs> Tangent carefully selects one cushion from the pile and perches on it. The school's expanding to some of the empty engineering base. She tells you. And we're getting a big new lab to do experiments using local resources. There's so much to learn on this planet. And then when he rolls her eyes, but Tang continues. We shouldn't forget our studies just because we've landed, she says primly. Tang's right. School's important. Ugh, school. Let's play outside. I want to explore the jungle. I miss space. Ooh. Uh. I want to explore the jungle. Roscoe's right, you hear over your shoulder, and you startle to find Dis uh, standing right behind you. Gah! When did he get here? Did you see those huge beasts in the jungle as we were landing? Dis continues, picking at a thread on his sweater until it unravels. I wonder if there are more out there. You feel it? You've had less of the deja vu dreams come to life feeling this week, and you're starting to think you even imagined it. But suddenly you get a prickling sensation in the back of your neck and remember that Mars is about to enter the lounge and tell everyone to look outside. You stare at the door. Mars walks in through it as if on cue. OMG, everybody look outside. They're hoisting a flag over com oh, bleh, they're hoisting a flag over command, she says, clapping her hands excitedly. You know what that means, right? She stands tall with her hands on her hips. Vertumna is officially humanity's first exocolony ever. You look out at the flag, feeling dizzy and silently mouth the words along to what she says next. You remember this moment so well. This is history, kids, she explains, wrapping an enemy and tangent under each arm. And we were there. It was relaxing, but also unnerving, apparently. Yeah, this kid's having, having a rough time. Oh my god. Wow. Um, sorry, I have to sneeze. Bless to you as well. <laughs> we we, um, we so both we, have little sneezes. We can forget cards. It's probably a good idea to forget a zero. Being Maybe babies. the red one. <laughs> yeah, because most of our cards are blue. Yeah, forget the red one. That's yeah, fine. we'll forget this one. Yeah, we forgot how to crawl. Oof. Oops. Uh, you wake from an afternoon nap. Oh, we're having another. Oh, you squint into the pink tinged light slanting through the windows. You must have fallen asleep in the lounge. Tammy's shadow falls across your nest of pillows. Oh, I, I'm sorry, Roscoe. She says, giggling. I didn't mean to wake you up. It's just so nice outside with pollen sparkling in the sunlight. I wanted to open the windows. You rub your eyes ble ble blearily. Ugh, you're having the weirdest dream. Um, 
Since you're awake, you should visit the cafeteria. Auntie Seton is making a new kind of candy. She says it is made of cotton. Isn't that weird? I have to go tidy up the crash first. Then I'll meet you there. Save some for me, okay? Ooh, I want some cotton candy. Uh, Tammy skits, skips off towards the crash, humming to herself. Go get that free candy. Free candy. I don't want any candy. Oh, fuck yeah, we want free candy. We're a kid. Where are you? Oh, my God. Hi. Uh, in the cafeteria, Auntie Sedent is cheerfully handing out masses of pink, can pink candy, puffy and soft like clouds. Oh, oh Roscoe. Do you want it? No, go for it. Oh, yeah. Roscoe. I was just about to ask. I was like, oh. yeah. <laughs> uh, she says, handing you a wand with some candy spun around the end. Here, try some of this. We used the we used to have it on Earth. Oh, it's cotton candy. Uh, you pull off a piece and give it a taste. It's so sweet at first that your mouth puckers. You've never tasted anything so sweet and so real. It's not at all like the soy sweets that Kitchen Nano Printer can make. It melts in your mouth, leaving a gritty residue on your tongue. You wait until everyone is gone, but Tammy never shows up. You look down at the cotton candy in your hands. It's wilted a little from the humidity, but it's kind of like her hair, you think. Pale pink and so soft. You keep some to give to her later. You're planning- you're relaxing in your family's quarters after dinner. Your mom had run off to some kind of council business, so you and your dad are playing a hollow game together. Uh, when you're about to- when you're just about ready to head off to bed, your mom returns. You can tell from the defeated slant in her shoulders that something has gone terribly wrong. Your dad starts to ask her what happened, but she waves him away and approaches you. She sits down and takes your hand, holding it between her two strong, dirt-creased ones. Roscoe, I'm sorry to have to tell you this. She starts, her mouth quivers as she swallows, working on her next words. Oh, for real? No, wait! Did she what what ha what happened what happened what happened to what should we not have went and gotten the candy did we just kill tammy are you fucking I kidding mean, me we we did not kill tammy but <laughs> did we just not die is that what happened mm. if we, uh. there was an accident this afternoon in the crash your classmate tammy has died you try to understand her words. Tammy dead? That's that's not possible. You suddenly remember the pink cotton candy you were saving to give to Tammy. Pink and fluffy, just like her hair. You put your hand in your pocket to get it, but what comes out is a sticky, dark red lump of hard goo. You stare at it, your mind blank. Ask what happened. Just go to bed. What happened? What happened? Your mom tells you, as simply as possible, that Tammy was killed by an electric shock from a broken hollow projector. It was just an accident. You press her for more. For an explanation. A, a little girl is dead. Someone you'd grown up with. Someone so much like you. She wasn't sick or anything. You just saw her this morning. She was right there. Why? Your mom's eyes are sad when she tells you. Sometimes there's just no reason why. You aren't sh wait, you aren't used to dealing with death and you don't know what you're supposed to say or do. You sort of mumble okay and then changed and get changed and crawl into bed a full hour before your bedtime. You try to fall asleep but you toss and turn for hours. You eventually drip, drift off to fitful dreams of that small, sticky red lump of cotton candy. Yo, what the fuck? Tammy's just dead? Yep, Tammy's just dead. What? <laughs> this game looks really cute, but it doesn't play around. <laughs> I don't, you can't see my face right now, but my jaw is just hanging. What? She just got electrocuted and died. She just got electrocuted and died. What? It's a freak accident. The fuck? We're in mourning. We're in mourning. You're mourning the loss of a loved one. All skill increases reduced by one for three months and some jobs and actions you can't, can't be performed. What the shit? Okay. Do our friends have anything to say? Yeah. 
Mars is staring into space, looking somber. She doesn't even notice you as you come beside her and barely reacts when you say hello. I'm thinking about Tammy, she says quietly. She used to sit down the hill there in that spot in the sun. Every morning she'd just sit there for hours in the sun doing nothing, just being happy. You stare down at the hill to the spot near the entrance to the quarters. You can imagine her there, working on some little craft project, humming to herself. I miss her too. She was so nice to everybody. Um, I miss her too. Now she's dead? Mars says, making a face. How is that fair? Of all the people, how come it had to be my friend? You don't have an answer. You've never heard Mars call Tammy her friend before, but of course she was. Tammy was everyone's scared little sister, even though she was older than most of you. Mars clicks her tongue. Oh yeah, administered Seek is looking for you. I guess they need someone to do delivery jobs. She was. She waves vaguely at the door behind her, distracted by her thoughts. Oh my god. Cal is sitting in your mom's flower garden with his face in his hands. He's clearly been crying all morning, and probably all of yesterday, too. He and Tammy were really- oh yeah, they Tammy were was our other best friend because they were really close. Yep. Yeah. He and Tammy were really close. When you guys used to play house in the creche, Tammy was always the mommy and Cal was the daddy. Even though you were just little kids, you kind of always giggled about how obviously they were going to be together forever. Like a princess and a knight. Are you okay? I miss her too. At least you finally left your quarters. Mm, do we ask her, are you okay? Or do we ask, or we just say, I miss her too? Because he's clearly not okay. Yeah, he doesn't look okay. No. But maybe, maybe I don't know. Maybe can console him or something. Which would you prefer? Are you okay? Yeah, let's try that. I hope that's okay. Yeah. He sniffs, looking up at you. You can see how puffy and red his eyes are. Um, I mean, no, not really. It's just what people want me to say, right? Tammy always liked these flowers, he mumbles. Sometimes I, I picked some for her. He runs his hand over his pretty white flowers. Don't, don't tell your mom, okay? Tears well up and slowly leak out of his eyes. He doesn't even blink, he just stares at the flowers as tears run down his cheeks. You decide to give him some space. Oh, oh cow. God damn. I'll talk to our parents in a moment. Fuck. This. what's Dis. up? Dis. Can you believe Tammy died? Disc asks morbidly. I heard Chief Engineer Instance tell someone about it. He lowers his voice. Tammy got shocked by a broken hollow projector. The one in the creche with the dancing teddy bear, you remember? When she touched it, she got chucked all the way across the room, he said, making a sailing, uh, he makes a sailing motion with his hands, and bam, she was dead before she even landed. Wow, really? Oh, I did not need to know that. Oh god, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's probably better to say, wow, really, because this is probably his way of dealing with it. Is is that sort of morbid like, kidness? Yeah. Or, yeah. To like to talk it out. Oh. Oh, well, maybe that was wrong. I don't know. Dis suddenly looks embarrassed. Yeah. I mean, it is too bad she's gone. She was nice. He tugs at the sleeves of his oversized jacket. But that's kind of a cool way to die. Oh. Um, Anemone is chucking rocks at the strato, sending metallic clangs ringing through the colony. Stupid planet! She yells. Stupid crash! Stupid spaceship! She bends down and picks up another rock, but instead just sobs and braces her hands on her knees. Stupid everything! Why'd she have to die? It's not fair! Kids are not supposed to die! Yeah, it's fucked up. Yeah, it is fucked up. Yeah. Tang? Hey. Tang is pacing around the front of engineering. She looks upset. It shouldn't have happened, she says. Tammy's what? What happened to Tammy? It shouldn't have been possible. 
There was no reason for the hollow projector to break. Professor Hal said it was recently serviced and nothing was wrong with it before it just... She gestures angrily. Just blew up for no reason. Nobody would have wanted to hurt her, so... Why? How? It doesn't add up. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Yeah. It's kind of weird. I'm glad that, that like, Tangent is thinking about that. Yeah, like, like what... It, it just seems was it sabotage was it what, what was it just it? seems really bizarre like and out of the blue mm-hmm. like uh. sorry roscoe i want to think about this some more i hate it when i can't find an answer hmm. is there anyone else to talk to or parents okay dad yeah hey dad your dad gives you a hug sorry you're feeling blue roscoe he says Things will start looking up again soon. He didn't call us his little aubergine. No, or his little gooseberry. His little radish. Or, it's, yeah. Hey, mom. I mean, things are serious. <laughs> yeah. Your mom pats your shoulder encouragingly. I'm so sorry, Roscoe. She's not really the comforting sort. No, she's not. She's, um, she's going to go shovel some more dirt. <laughs> what would you like to do today? Fuck, I don't know. <laughs> I, can you go to the quarters? Yeah. I know it like it's only relaxing in yeah. here. Huh, okay. I really wish we could like investigate or something in here. That would be really cool. It's true. We're ten. Um but- Good point. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the reminder. <laughs> I immediately want to reset the timeline and go save Tammy. Mm-hmm. I know that's not a thing we can even do yet. If that's even a thing. I don't know. What the fuck should we do? We should go do our brains. I don't okay. know. Brain. Go, go do our brains. <laughs> <laughs> uh, life sciences, engineering, humanities. Probably life sciences. Did that give us the most brain? Uh, I mean, it, it, different brains. Uh, this is biology and reasoning. Um, this is engineering and reasoning. Uh, we should probably up our engineering a little bit. So let's do engineering. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Just skipping right to the the challenge on this one. I think because we're sad. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep, we're just going to go do what we need to do. It's fine. (laughs) There was no... We didn't get any narrative. We are sad and we do not care about... We did friend friend up with um, Tangent, though. Yeah. The colony is going to hold a funeral for Tammy. Do you want to attend? You don't feel up to it. You could just skip it and take the month off instead. Or you could get back to work. Yes, I'll attend. No, I want to grieve by myself. No, I'm too busy. Tammy who? Tammy who? What the fuck is that one? Uh, we sh- I want to go to it. I want to... S- yeah. Yep. What do you think? Yes. yes. We'll attend. Oh, is this the, like... Uh, is this the body flashback we had? Maybe it's not... The, maybe it's a different body that we flash back about. <laughs> oh, no. Who could say? Uh- <laughs> oh, boy. The, ca- the colonists gather in the recycling room. Bringing organics down to be recycled here is one of your chores, but you've only come here for a funeral twice. Both times, a colonist had passed away from natural causes during the 20-year-long journey from Earth. This is the first time there's been a funeral on Vertumna, and the first time someone you actually knew. Yeah, we haven't seen... Oh, I was going to say we hadn't seen her dad. Um, The mouth of the organics recycler has been polished and a wreath of yellow flowers placed on the opening. Inside, you can see a shrouded figure, Tammy's small, fragile body. Tammy's dad, Uncle Tonin, is here, as well as your parents and Auntie Sedent and the rest of the council. Cal is here with his mom and her, and her partners, already crying in their arms. The room is packed with people, and the feeling of grief is so thick that you can taste it in your mouth. Uh... Governor Uticott stands before the assembled crowd. Ooh. Oh. I guess I can I guess I can be here. Yeah. There are no words to ease the pain we feel today. That's really good. She, oh, like thank that. you. She begins solemnly. There is only the sad company of those of us left behind to share the burden of that grief. Tammy was our child, she continues. One of the first humans to be born in space and the first to die on an alien planet. In her short life, she exemplified the very arc of human accomplishment, bending hopefully towards life beyond our humble Earth. 
She is the first of us who can truly call Vertumna home. Her passing was, a sens was as senseless as it was sudden. Losses like this are impossible to hold within oneself. A painful reminder that life is impossibly precious and fragile. But they also remind us, as always, that as a community, we are capable of great strength. Utica closes the door to the recycler. You hear Uncle Tonin sob over the hum of the particle disintegrators beginning their work. As a community, we remember Tammy. As a community, we return her body to the soil that nourishes us. In this way, Tammy, our child from the stars, will never truly be lost to us. The ceremony is adjourned, but a few people stay back to consult Uncle Tonin as he keeps vigil over their cycler. Cal and Uncle Tonin hold each other and weep openly. Your mom stays behind to receive Tammy's remains. As the head of geoponics, she'll be responsible for adding them to the colony's precious supply of brown soil from Earth. Your dad accompanies you out of the recycling room. He clears his throat. I want you to know that you don't need to be okay, he says, clasping his warm hand on your shoulder. If you want to take the rest of the month off, where everything's going to, everyone's going to understand. Take the month off, go back to school. Um, okay, so here's what I'm thinking. If we take the month off, can we poke around in the lounge? No, I, th I think we just sleep. Just sleep. Mm. Do we gain anything other than lowering stress when we take a month off? Um, maybe not this time. Uh -huh. Sometimes you get to spend time with whoever is in the resting area, but we don't know. This time it's unclear. I'm kind of curious. I kind of want to take a month off. It also feels like the response. I don't know. It, it just feels like the responsible thing to do for your mental health. I agree. So yeah. let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. Take a month off. I mean, we're probably going to lose some time to do stuff, That's I imagine. Fair. But we're probably going to feel a little bit better, better, hopefully. The prospect of just going back to school like everything is normal is too much to handle. You end up spending the whole month alternating between sleeping, scrolling the hollow net, and staring into space. It's restful, at least, and everyone gives you the time you need to process Tammy's death. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. It's probably good to take some time. Into dust. Into dust. Okay. Hey, what's All right. What's up? Roscoe. Uh, Tangent says, approaching you with purpose. We need to discuss my brother. Who? Oh, Dis? Yes. Yes, Dis. She says impatiently. I need you to figure out where he's been disappearing. Ever since we landed, I barely see him anymore. We don't even, uh, he doesn't even come home at night sometimes, and I... She trails off looking at her feet. Well, I'm not on very good terms with my brother of late, but I... Well, people are becoming worried. He's just disappearing yep. and not coming home? Just taking off. Yo, what? I'll talk to him. I'll find out. That's his own you get business. The feeling Tang is the one who's worried, but she doesn't want to admit it. Uh, I'll find out. Thank you, Roscoe. She says, looking relieved for a second before her expression hardens again. I mean, it would be a ridiculous waste of resources if something happened to him and no one knew where he was or how to find him. Right, of course. Tang doesn't get worried. All right, Tang. <laughs> Dis. 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 Dis, what are you doing? Dis. Dis. What's up? You tell Dis that his sister Tangent wants to know where he's been disappearing off to. Oh, we just came out and fucking told him, huh? Um, his eyes flit briefly to yours, then he stares vaguely off towards the engineering wing where his sister is reading on her hollow palm between classes. He doesn't say anything. Unfortunately, we are not good enough friends with this to Damn. ask where you go. Uh, she's worried about you. Yeah. She doesn't care about me, he says sullenly. Tangent's just worried she'll get in trouble if I don't come home one day. He scowls and picks at the hem of his sweater. She doesn't care about anything but her schoolwork. Meh. Uh, do we want to just leave him alone? Just leave him alone. We can't... I don't want to say, you better tell me where else. Yeah. Like, his shoulders slump in relief as you go. I feel like that'll just shut him off, you know? Yeah. Uh, Cal. Hey, Cal. Cal looks up at the sky, shading his eyes. 
I wonder when it's going to rain again, he says. The heat doesn't bother me none, but after a while, the plants are going to get all toasty. Um, and we didn't have anything to give him, right? Oh, I Nemini. don't think we have any okay. items. Nemni is lying in the dirt, sweating and gasping for breath. It's so hot, she complains. How am I supposed to run in these conditions? Dad did say it gets really hot in dust. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right, what do you want to do? Something inside, not shoveling dirt. Okay, that is <laughs> valid. Oh, hey, what's up? Oh, Mars. Ugh, I have all these kudos and nowhere to spend them yet, Mars says, sighing. Seek says the depot store won't open until next year. How am I supposed to show off how much better and harder working I am than everyone else? <laughs> I like her. Great, Mars. I love Mars. I really like her. Um... Uh, maybe we'll Let's go see. do some, hmm, uh, some, some, oh, okay, what are we getting blocked out of? Uh, create, uh, persuasion? Okay. Uh, so, a bunch of the, the people all have, uh, like, things that they, you need your stats up for, like, uh, you need biology to up cows, you need bravery to up disses. You need toughness to up anemones. You need reasoning to up tangents. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Um, and Mars is persuasion. But we're also being locked out of, uh, we need 20 toughness to be able to unlock this. 10. We need 10 toughness. Maybe we do want to up our toughness, actually. Okay. Cause... We probably could get to 10 with one, one toughness up. The other question is, do we want to do uh shoveling dirt or do we want to do i think sports ball ups toughness too uh what does it get us Bra it's bravery oh, and toughness maybe we'll up our bravery and toughness because okay. we haven't even touched our bravery sure let's um, do that yeah uh anemone greets you on the court she's bouncing from one leg to the other in, in excitement my brother Kam is organizing a youth team she tells you uh kombucha offers you a high five and greeting then tosses a sports ball your way Oh, they're so cute. I love the art so much. I know. They're really cute. We'll start with a practice game to see what you're good at. You and Anemone are team, are team captains. Pick your team. Uh, Calm will, fi uh, will fill in. Wait. Calm will fill in to even up the teams, but he promises to go easy on the other side. Do you want to choose Cal, Mars, or Kombucha? Um, oh, let's choose Cal. Cal yeah. it is. Yeah. Uh, mind if I play goalie? He asks. Sports ball is fun, but I don't really like to score against the other team. Uh, Anemone chooses Kombucha, of course. Uh, they bump fists. Your next choice is Mars. Yeah. Yeah. I'll play Spiker. Mars runs to take position. Uh, she seems uh, seems like she's in it for the glory. Hopefully, she'll want to share some of that with the rest of the team. You face off. Three on three. Start the game. Yeah. Challenge. This is great. We got friends with a lot of people. Okay. Yeah. Multi-round. Ooh, uh, story challenges have three rounds instead of one. After every round, you'll keep the cards you didn't play and unlock an extra slot in, uh, to play them in. Losing isn't always a bad thing in story challenges. Okay. Okay, so we need to hit 27, which is going to be hard because we have a whole lot of zero cards. But Ooh, here we go. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the zeros, I think, because they're zero. Okay. Um, so that's seven. Seven. Um, uh, oh, wait. That's pretty good, right? One 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 two. two yep okay okay and now we just need to hit nine which i think we can do Four, five, so six, we're gonna seven. do uh i don't think we can i think we're one short right um give me a moment i think we're gonna do one dun 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 oh yeah nice there you go okay okay yeah you did a, a some better matches there okay cal makes an amazing jump save but is winded when the ball hits him in the chest uh, the score is tied with Anemone and Calm putting the pressure on. Uh, then BAM! Oh, blam! <laughs> you, <laughs> score, you score the match point with a rad spike all the way from netline. Uh, set neighbors to this value, playing sports ball. Cool. Is the memory we just got. Neat. And we, we got, got bravery. bravery. Uh, it's time for, uh, for Vertumnalia! For, for Woo! Uh, Utica and the council have called a festival to celebrate life here on the planet Vertumna. Everyone gathers in the colony square to hear Governor Utica's speech. Oh boy, she's got a lot <laughs> to say. All right, let's settle in. <laughs> in Earth history, Utica begins and then clears her throat and waits for everyone to quiet down. <clears throat> in 
Earth history, Vertumna was known as the god of seasons, change, gardens, and fruit. It's no coincidence that our forebearers of Vertumna Project chose to take on such an auspicious name in the hopes of seeding future bountiful seasons of humanity. We will continue this tradition of Vertumnalia, a midsummer festival to celebrate our Vertumna, this lush planet upon which we find ourselves today. Yawn or clap? Clap. Yay. Everyone cheers and applauds. The members of the council all get up on stage one at a time to give their own short speeches. Governor Uticott announces each one. Chief Administrator Seek Command, Chief uh, Security Chief Rhett Garrison, uh, Chief Engineer Instance Engineering, Chief Cultivator Flulu Geoponics, Chief Steward Antecedent Quarters, Chief Surveyor Melatonin Expeditions. Melatonin is going on expedition. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when it's your mother's, when it's your mother Flu, uh, Flulu's turn, she announces that tonight you'll be eating some of the very first crops grown from Vertumnan soil. Uh, your eyes go, uh, your eyes go to the feast table. Aboard the stratosphere. Uh, wait, is that what it's called? The stratospheric, but I think they call it just a couple different stratospheric. things. Stratospheric, yeah. okay. Um, it would have been mostly soy-based food from the nanoprinters, spiced up with what precious fruits and vegetables could be grown in the small growing bays. This year, the earth plants look even less robust than usual, but they're supplemented by some vertumnin plants you've come to appreciate. Uh, juicy water toe pods and slabs of edible fungi. There sure is a lot of those around. There's a lot of <laughs> mushrooms. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Uticott takes the stage after everyone on the council has said their said their piece. What is a festival without festival activity? Festi no, festival no, activities. Festivities. <laughs> 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 oh boy, uh, she asks. Um, Professor Hal and Security Chief Rhett have organized a three-party competition for the kids. Good luck, children. Uh, which one will you join? Do you want a bot wrestle, talent show with our creativity, or science fair with our reasoning? Oh, fuck yeah, science fair. By a science fair it yeah. is. Tangent competes, of course, entering her study of the ship's hydro recycling systems. It was previously used to make urine drinkable, but she offers that it could now be used to turn, uh, could now be turned to new uses. We don't need to drink our pee anymore. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> we could use it for other things. Despite how many times she says the word pee, it's still boring. <laughs> but she put a lot of effort into it. Uh, your turn to go next. The judges are all very interested in what you're bringing to compete against Tangent. Let's do this thing. Present our projects. Oh. <gasps> okay, Ooh. it's another multi-stage. Uh, we need to reach 40. Yep. We probably want to put that I'm going to do in, one, actually. one, one. I guess we're not going to hit it. Damn. Okay. Um, But that's okay. Oh, we got some, um, one, one. I'm going to do this. One, two. Yeah. Yeah. Again, we're not going to hit it, but that's okay. Um, well, we have Cal's strength, though. Oop. Defeated! I think I accidentally hit give up. But we weren't going to hit it anyway. But I didn't mean oh, to hit man. give up. <laughs> that that was purely accidental, I'm going to be completely like, honest. Why did it happen so fast? <laughs> I, I, I was moving too quickly. It's okay. They probably should say, are you sure you want to give up? Yeah, I'm surprised. A little bit of usability feedback. <laughs> Oh, well. Hey, for what it's worth, we increased our friendship with Tangent by losing. <laughs> yeah, you know, the, the game did say sometimes it's okay to lose in the story thing. Yeah, so, uh, but that was not deliberate. Damn. Oh, well. Tangent wins. She accepts her prize with grace, having expected nothing less. Your baking soda volcano was much less impressive than you imagined. It just kind of fizzes, and then you don't explain it very well. It's, it's pretty clear your dad helped. Maybe next year. <laughs> Maybe next year. <laughs> Um, after the festivities are over, everyone takes time off for a much needed break. During the fierce heat of dust, a few days rest is exactly what you need. You feel refreshed. Nice. Alrighty. I would love to know how and why Tammy died still. I know that we're just moving on with our lives, but can you go talk to her dad? Yep. How's he doing? Not great. Um, you step cautiously through the colony gates. Roscoe. Uncle Tonin sighs as he blocks your path. 
He looks like he hasn't been sleeping. I'm sorry, but you shouldn't be out here. Our children are so young and and so precious, so fragile. Please stay near the ship. Oh, he's not doing great. No, he's not doing great. Oh. <sighs> How you doing, Cal? <sighs> hey, Cal. You're looking for Cal in the garden when you nearly trip over someone else. One of the younger kids, and they're blindfolded? Hey! They exclaim, ripping off the blindfold, ripping the blindfold off their face and throwing it to the ground. It's Cirrus, one of Anemone's brothers. He glares at you. I was almost done! Cal jogs over and grabs Cirrus in a friendly headlock, ruffling his messy red hair. Dude, you're so close! Asiris stamps his feet and complains that you got it, got in his way. It's not their fault, Cal says. They didn't know you were playing a game. Give me a sec, I want to teach them how to play. Oh. Cal turns to you as Cirrus leaves. Sorry, Roscoe, he says sheepishly. I was teaching Cirrus a new game, but he's more like an enemy than I thought. Real competitive, you know? Uh, he stoops and to pick up the blindfold, brushing off the dirt. I've been trying to come up with a different ki with different kinds of games and other sports ball. Wait, other ki different kinds of games other than sports ball, he says. No winners or losers. I just want to have fun with my friends. Cal looks at you hopefully. Do you want to learn how to play? That sounds like a total waste of time. Let me check my schedule. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Best friend, we're going to play your game. Cal smiles and looks like it's gonna. Cal's smile looks like it's gonna stretch right off his face. Radical! He shouts, jumping up and down with excitement. Okay, so first put this blindfold. Put on this blindfold. Uh, the blindfold is a little scratchy and smells like dirt. You can feel Cal's big hands on your shoulders. Uh, I'm gonna spin you around, and when I let go, you gotta listen to my instructions. We're gonna walk around all the way to the cafeteria, okay? Uh, you nod. Uh, you can't see Cal's grin, but you can hear it in his voice as he spins you around and counts to ten. One, two, three. Quick question, by the way. Yeah? Do you want to alternate general narration every other episode, or are you okay? Oh, that's not a bad idea. You are, we could do I that. am perfectly fine with you doing it, but I know there's a lot of general narration, that so I'm, I'm happy to alternate. I just figured I'd do it, because you're the one controlling. Um, controlling but... takes no effort. <laughs> <laughs> you just press advance. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, then, yeah, maybe I know where I'm too in, so maybe in the next one if you want to okay. narrate. That Sounds works. good. I just wanted to offer that up. Sure. Uh, first, Cal says, you gotta walk forward 10 steps. Uh, you do, do you follow Cal's instructions as best you can or make things difficult for him? Do your best, make him work for do it. Do your best! You take 10 steps straight forward, holding your hands out for balance. The rocky dirt beneath the garden, uh, between the garden beds crunches under your feet. Yeah, Cal says. Now, uh, turn your right and take, turn to your right and take 15 steps uh, until you get to the door. Get it right. Get it right. Uh, you turn to the right and walk forward, counting out 15 steps. When you stop, Cal laughs. You can hear his footsteps crunching behind you. I forgot how much bigger I am than you. Uh, you're like two more steps away. Uh, you take two more steps until your outstretched hands land on the warm metal of the door. Success! Awesome! Cal says. You can't help but smile. This is fun! Now hit the door button on the right and then keep walking forward until I say stop. Go really slowly, okay? Uh, you open the door and start to walk forward. The path slopes downwards. Uh, it's the bleh. The path slopes downwards as your feet slip a little, even though you're not moving as slow. You're moving as slowly as you can. Real dirt is nothing like the metal floors of the stratospheric. It's turbo rocky in here, Cal says, and you can feel uneasy uneasiness prickle in the back of your arms. Just keep going forward slowly. Okay. Well, we don't have enough empathy to trust him, so unfortunately, we have to fill ourselves with doubt. Oh no! Can we trust him? You try to do as you're told, but. After a few steps, your foot knocks against a sprawling root and you fall forward, catching yourself on your hands and knees. Ouch! You tear off the blindfold, a sudden rush of tears flooding your eyes. Oh no! Cal's beside you in an instant, kneeling on the rocks. Are you okay? He asks. You look down at yourself. Your knees and hands are scraped up, are pretty scraped up, and your pride is bruised. But other than that, you're okay. Cal helps you stand. Oh, I'm sorry, Roscoe. I'll be a better helper next time. He asks if you want to get some uh, wat wat to 
Watato? Watato? What? Ah, like a potato. I don't know. Uh, Watato. They're like pods. I think they're just like, because in the Vertimnalia festival, they describe them as potato pods. So oh, okay. I don't know if it's a bean. No, oh, okay. Watato. Uh, you, um, he asks if you want to get some potato juice at the cafeteria instead. You spend the rest of the afternoon brainstorming more games where there are no winners or losers. A fun time with Cal, except when we fell down. But that's <laughs> a okay. mostly fun time. Mostly fun, yeah. Um, do we want to uh, try to? Because we were working on our toughness to get it to ten, but we only got one because uh, we were doing bravery and toughness. Oh yeah. So we can do uh, sports ball again, or we could do um, hydroponics, or we can do something else. I guess we could shovel dirt and up our toughness a little bit more. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Shovel dirt. It's shovel dirt. Uh, the warm sun feels good when you work outside. Cal is so happy in the sun, almost like he's part plant. He soaks it in and never seems to get too hot. Shoveling dirt. Let's do it. Ten. All right. That's it. Yeah. Okay. So you don't have to hit it exactly, right? You can go over. It no, like. it'll sometimes give you challenges where you have to hit it exactly. Oh, and okay. sometimes you get bonus points for going super over, like if you do really, really oh. well. So it just depends on... Right now, we're baby, so... Okay. <laughs> it's produced or afford. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. All right. All right. Late, late dust. Dust. Too late dust. All right. Does anyone want anything? Yeah, anyone have anything going on? I think we now... I'm going to go pick up... Mm -hmm. No, it looks like nobody wants anything. Okay. Oh, I... Much log. Oh. Um, I didn't even see that there. It's hard to, it was hard to see. Um, I'm going to apply just because this is what our tough... We were raising our toughness to yeah. unlock. So let's go ahead and do yes. that. Perfect. Okay. Uh, Chief Administrator Seek greets you at the depot. They look you up and down. Hmm, Roscoe. You never struck me as a particularly responsible or organized, but children never are. What makes you think you'd be a good fit for the position of courier? Uh, you didn't realize this was going to be a job interview. I can carry a lot. I can carry a lot. Strong for your age, maybe. But lucky for you, you're the only applicant this week. You've got the job. For now, anyway. They use their elegant stylus to note on note this on their hollow hollow palm. I also I always want to say hollow pad. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think it I think it's literally like they bring like it. A, I think they have an implant. Yeah. yeah. Um come back in a few minutes and you can help make deliveries. Yes. There will be kudos in it if you do it correctly. Let's see what um, uh, stats we can increase with deliveries. Oh, yeah. It is organizing, <gasps> perception, friendship, friendship with Mars, uh, and kudos. Ooh, where's organizing under our brain? Uh, yep. And perception it has nothing right now. Yeah. Sure. Let's do it. Um, Seek sends you all around the colony delivering supplies. During your first week, it's mostly mostly small things you can carry by hand or push on a little cart. Stuff like tools and electronics. Some are high priority, which means you have to move fast. It's fun getting to yell, important delivery coming through! And people actually get out of the way. I'm glad that made us happy. <laughs> That's cute. Of course a little kid wants to like feel important and stuff. That's really cute. How'd we do? Okay. Yeah. We did fine, and there's no bonus for hitting it exactly, so we are good. Cool. Yeah. Ooh. Look at all them stats and stuff. Yeah. Love to see it. And we're going into wet. Early, Early wet. wet. Ah, it's raining now. Ooh. Oop, change of hey, colors dust. here. Yeah, I guess What's we can up? talk to just real quick before. Oh. It's pouring rain, and everyone's trying to stay dry under the grass roof uh, palapa palapas. Okay. Uh, Palapas? I don't know. Everyone except Dis. Off in the distance, over at the wall near the sports ball field, he's definitely skulking. Ah, our perception is terrible. We Damn can't fi follow him. All right, we'll ignore him. We'll ignore him. I don't want to get okay. him in trouble. When you glance back, Dis is gone. Ugh. What are you up to, Dis? Dis is up to something. You are up to some shit. 
yeah, it's interesting that people are just kind of, they're just kind of off doing their stuff. Yeah, I mean, they're very much like, well, long- <laughs> they've got little lives and we are not super observant. No, um, maybe next time we could do something to up our perception or at least get that going. What do you think? I think so. I think, um, I mean, we know, we know the only way to up our perception, which is um, doing delivery right now. Yeah. Um, as always, it's like, Chasing one stat is there's pros and cons. Like that that check that we just missed, it's not coming back. We missed it. Yeah. Totally. This, um so so this is one of those games where you can't like chase that fix in order to fix things in the future. Oh, I understand. On the other hand, perception is definitely something that we would benefit from. Yeah. Uh, I, I think. Um all of our stats are things we'd benefit from. Oh, so it's for sure. just figuring out how we want to approach things. Yeah, how we want to balance it out. Exactly, yeah. and who we want to be. Yeah. Because ultimately failing it can be part of our character. Like that's not a bad thing. That's ultimately. very true. Yeah, definitely. Um, ha. Huh. Well, I guess, yeah, next time we can, well, it will be the beginning of wet and we can decide how we want to spend the next month and learn more about ourselves and yeah. What kind of person we want Roscoe to be. I think that sounds like a plan. See you next time, folks. Bye everyone. <laughs>